Hello, this is Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to cover the final um, parts of what we started in the previous video cast, the parts of the endomembrane system. Uh, in this video cast, we're going to focus on lysosomes, vacuoles, and peroxisomes. Lysosomes are specialized vesicles uh, found and produced within most cells that are containers for digestive enzymes. Uh, they're generally produced by the rough ER working with the Golgi apparatus to produce completed lysosomes filled with digestive enzymes. Uh, they carry out a type of digestion we call intracellular digestion. And intra here means within the cytoplasm of the cell. So this type of digestion requires that this, the cell to absorb or take in food particles from outside. And this generally happens by way of endocytosis. Now a special type of endocytosis is phagocytosis or cellular eating. And that's when a cell surrounds a food particle or a bacteria and then fuses this, what it's made as a food vacuole, fuses this food vacuole with lysosomes so that the digestive enzymes can get out the food that's trapped inside the food vacuole and digest it. Uh, lysosomes can also be a part of what we call autophagy, which is when a cell digests itself. Uh, keep in mind that if a large number of lysosomes rupture and release their digestive enzymes in the cytosol, that the cell can actually digest itself. And sometimes this is part of a system where a cell is programmed to self-destruct. And the fancy word for this is apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. We'll talk more about that later, and that comes up in a lot of situations in cell biology. Here's a diagram here that shows you what we've been talking about here. Uh, here's a food particle uh, labeled in red right here, and the cell is surrounding this food particle. It knows it's a food particle because it has protein membrane receptors here that interact with the surface of the bacteria, so the cell knows what it's, it's capturing here. This food particle ends up surrounded by what once was cell membrane material or plasma membrane material, and this is now what we call a food vacuole. Okay, we're going to ignore this, this word right here, and we're going to call this a food vacuole, and then here come the lysosomes. The lysosomes will then fuse with the food vacuole so that the enzymes that are inside the lysosome here can now interact with and digest this food particle. So these little things here now are the digestive enzymes. Okay, and as this process continues, eventually we end up with the nutrients are diffusing out or being transported out of the food vacuole, and what's left over is then dumped by way of exocytosis out into the environment. So what I've drawn here in red is what once was the membrane of the food vacuole. So you can kind of see how this whole process works. Vacuoles are another part of the endomembrane system. They're large vesicles, again, made by the ER and the Golgi, and they have a membrane around them that contains proteins that makes them selectively permeable. So they can take in or get rid of things in a way that the cell has control of. And their function is primarily storage or transport of material. Uh, depending on where the cell is located in the organism, uh, in the plant or in the animal, um, vacuoles might have different functions and contain different substances. Uh, food vacuoles, which is what we saw in the slide before this one, are formed by phagocytosis, and that's how intracellular digestion takes place. And we also have a really cool vacuole called a contractile vacuole found in certain types of animal cells. And contractile vacuoles, their job is to pump extra water out of the liquid part of the cytoplasm, or the cytosol. Uh, contractile vacuoles are primarily found in freshwater protozoan cells like paramecia. And what they do is they prevent the cell from exploding or from swelling up and rupturing due to the osmotic movement of water into the cell from the environment. Remember, cytoplasm is generally hypertonic to a freshwater environment. So that means osmosis is constantly moving water molecules into the cytoplasm and increasing its volume. I found a video here which will show what I'm talking about. Um, here in this picture here, we have a contractile vacuole. This whole system here is one contractile vacuole in a freshwater organism called paramecium, which is an excellent example to use for lots of things in cell biology. So let me show you what we're talking about here. I'm going to run this video. Oops, go back. Let's see if we get this video here to play. 
The contractile vacuoles of ciliates are permanent structures that periodically squeeze excess water out through a tiny pore. In some paramecium species, the contractile vacuoles have conspicuous feeder arms, but in most ciliates, the canal system is less apparent, and the contractile vacuole appears as a simple sphere. Okay, hope that little video worked to show us what we've been talking about here. Let me go back to my picture. What you guys saw is a contractile vacuole filling up with water and then communicating with the cell membrane through a pore to dump that water outside. So in a side view, basically what you have is something that looks like this. And this is the outside or the environment, and this is the cytoplasm, this is the inside. And this is the contractile vacuole. And what happens, all those little feeder arms are pumping water into here. And finally, when it gets large enough, it then expels the water out to this pole. So it's kind of actually like, just like a water pump for paramecia. Uh, very important for organisms that have to survive in fresh water. All right, you probably have already heard of plant cell vacuoles. I bet most of you, when you heard the word vacuole, you thought of what plant cells have. Uh, the most Probably the largest organism, the organelle inside of a plant cell is its vacuole. Here it's drawn in blue. It def definitely takes up most of the volume of plant cells. Sometimes plant cells have more than one of them, one, two, or three of them. Most diagrams usually just draw it as one. What they do is they are for storage. They store primarily water, but dissolved in the water you may also find ions and other metabolic products like sugars, for example. Uh, they are absolutely central to plant cell homeostasis for plant cells to stay happy. And what plant cells do with their vacuoles is they keep them filled with liquid so that the vacuole is pushing against the cytoplasm, which pushes against the cell membrane, which pushes against the cell wall, and keeps the whole plant cell very tight and very juicy. And we call that turgor pressure. I'll talk more about that later. All right. Uh, peroxisomes. This is our last part of the endomembrane system, and they are found in eukaryote cells. Uh, the more metabolically active the cell is, the more peroxisomes it's going to have. Peroxisomes, uh, their job is to metabolize many different types of molecules, especially things like fats and fatty acids. Uh, they contain enzymes that carry out this function, and as a byproduct of this metabolism, they produce hydrogen peroxide. H2O2, which is a nasty molecule. Um, hydrogen peroxide is very reactive. It's what we call an oxidizer, and it will pretty much tear apart anything it comes into contact with. So peroxisomes contain an enzyme called peroxidase, which immediately breaks down the hydrogen peroxide as it's being produced. Uh, this is a transmission electron microscope picture of a peroxisome, probably from a liver cell. And this isn't completely sure, but scientists think that these peroxidase enzymes are held in some type of crystalline matrix. And if you look very closely, you can see this like a grid-like formation in here. Very, very cool, fine structure inside of a peroxisome. But this whole thing is a peroxisome. And this structure in here is believed to be a matrix that's holding the peroxidase enzymes and the other metabolic enzymes in a, um, in a structure that's important to the function of the peroxisome. All right, that's the end of this video cast. Thanks for listening.